coming to you from the M&M Exterior Studio in Nooksville, Virginia, this is Flushing It Out with Samantha Spittle, the introvert's extrovert. She talks to people so you don't have to. For now. Welcome back to episode two of Fleshing It Out with Samantha Spittle, the introvert's extrovert. I'm so excited to be with Dawn Gardner today of DG Photography. She has been a friend of mine for the last year, right? I think so. A year. Um, We met each other through networking, through business life, um, but we connected because she's a powerhouse woman and she said something at a fun uh, night she hosted of business women kind of sharing their tips and, you know, their, their stories and whatnot. And she said... I collect women or something. What did you say? Something I like- think I did say that. I think I said I, I meet women and then if I really like them, I start collecting them and yes. I never let them go. Yes. <laughs> and of course I stood up and was like, oh my, like I didn't stand up, but I think I was like, you know, preach or something like that. Cause mm-hmm. I was like, that's what I like doing. So I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank I'm excited you to so be here. Much. So we've talked a lot about, I think you and I just sometimes go on little tangents of thoughts in our heads and found that we're kind of on the same wavelength with the whole wanting to empower women and kind of the, what I talked about on the last podcast, which was take the stuff that's kind of inside and bring it out so that we can deal with it and deal in reality instead of letting it fester inside oh, yeah. of us. Yeah, for sure. And so I think I shared that with you and you said, what you were like, yeah, I've been thinking about this. Yes, I actually did. And I said that I've been thinking about this particular issue or change and Mm -hmm. how it's been on me to really evaluate it and think about it and and talk about it so when you said oh I'm doing this podcast and I'm like oh yeah yes and why don't you tell us to let everyone know because yes you're a photographer but I would say you're definitely not just any photographer I think that (laughs) your niche is what gives you the I don't know if the words credibility, expertise, whatever have you. Okay, I'll take all of those. Yes, 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 <laughs> definitely. But that's, I think, why you have such an extra unique perspective, because it's not only through your own lens of looking at your life, mm-hmm. but you've been able to have a unique view of lots of women's lives. So. I, I have. And, you know, I think um, I have tell the story that the reason why I got started in photography was Darren Stevens of Bewitched. You know, oh, he yeah. was an ad man, but he also put you know, images and, um, text and copy and all these cool advertisements. So I always thought that he had the best job. And so I think that's why I went into graphic design and photography. So I started my photography business, uh, in 2007, went full time in 2013, but you know, I have such a passion for empowering women and enabling them to see their own beauty. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, makes me really great at what I do. Uh, I think also the graphic design kind of comes in there too. Um, and the training I got from Darren Stevens, of course, (laughs) but I think that's that what, that's what makes me have or resonate with women because I could tell you, I've probably at some point in my life been, been every Every woman, Mm -hmm. you know, not every woman, but a lot of different women throughout my life. You've gone through a lot of different stages and experiences. So you're able to kind of, and probably emotionally too, you know, all those different things. So, so. um, yeah. And, and so important to me is, is, um, having women change their story because, you know, that's what I, when I saw you at the last networking function that Mm -hmm. we were doing, I was really wanting to talk about this Mm -hmm. that's been you know, been thinking about it quite a bit. And, yeah. and it's actually really, um, part of my mission. Yeah. And I think women, we, as women go into, uh, a mirror and we see the reflection number one, but also we see a lot of things that we don't like, mm-hmm. or that we've been told throughout the years, um, that we, that we seem to hone in on. Yeah. And really that is number one, it's a reflection, but number two, it's a story that mm-hmm. we've made up or we've been told by other people mm-hmm. and I'm about, I'm all about just busting that wide open yeah. and letting people see something different from that. I love that. And I think that ties into, as I said before, kind of sharing what I, what our story is. Cause I know for me, um, you know, when you share p- with people kind of those thoughts in your head, mm-hmm. if they're not true, they can help bust that for you, you know, Absolutely. and it kind of goes back to that connecting with other people and then connecting with trusted people and things like that. But I feel like sometimes 
people and especially women can sometimes see things in you that you don't see in yourself. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and you know, sometimes I think it's also good. And this is why I thought your first podcast was just out of this world oh, was thanks. sharing stories that sometimes are uh, taboo or yes. not, or are not wanting to talk about them because yes. the freedom of that. And I just laughed almost all the way through in parts of your <laughs> podcast because, you know, those kinds of things happen and we need to, and we need to share it. And well, because it's a freedom, it opens you up to say, Oh my God, she's so real. And oh. yeah. I might have pooped myself yeah. at one point. <laughs> but you don't need to share it. No, oh, you know, sharing, offline, but... we can yeah. hear. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and that's why when you were talking about changing your story, I thought, oh, man, like, I wish, you know, it could come up. I mean, I, I know I have other stories, but just harping on that one again or using that one again is that that was kind of one of those things that, oh, yeah, I could use this to make myself feel bad and mm -hmm. to continually put yep. myself down. Or, you know, I could flip the script and say, no, this is, you know... I'm not going to let this hold me down and things like that. Yep. But but that didn't happen overnight. I mean, no. like the the phone call of the E. coli that <laughs> that allowed me to just have the freedom to yep. tell it. Yeah. Um. But it was through the telling of it multiple times that I and the more pe women that said, "Oh my gosh, me too." And yeah, I have exactly. my own. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> as I was talking to someone earlier today, I'm like, yeah, I didn't. I didn't plan out to be the poop girl. Like I wasn't <laughs> planning to let this be my theme. But hey, if that's what if it works brings and, women and, together and brings attraction yes. and brings people yes. freedom to tell their Send own stories. Send me your message. Like there you let's go. do it. Um, but yeah, I think that that's the the freedom in telling those stories is I think that you hear yourself too. And you it's we hear it a lot. You don't you wouldn't talk to yourself the way you talk to a friend. Oh, absolutely. And so I think that's why when we share that stuff, you hear what you're, if you bring your thoughts to the outside and it becomes, you just, I just feel like you look at it a different way. So yeah. Well, one Sherry, I, one story I wanted to share with you is, um, I used to be, uh, well, this is when my uh, first child was very young. So I was in a mom's group. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually held a place of leadership in the group. Ooh. Ooh. I was something like PR or newsletter or something. Oh, that's super fancy. Tapping into, you know, yeah. all the things that I could, I was good at, right? Um, and so I wasn't great at speaking in, in public and mm -hmm. really hadn't uh, had any much practice or whatever. Actually, I, I was pretty much a feared it mm -hmm. very, very yeah. much. Which I would say most people do. Yeah, even, yeah. you know, growing up in – I mean, I think, yeah, yeah, you're probably right. But so the the president of the group says to me just right off the cuff one, one meeting, she goes, um, and now we'll hear from Don Gardner about the status of membership – and Samantha, it was oh. just like a movie. Oh, I'm like nervous for you. Just it was I just like imagine. a movie. Like, I got uh. up there to the podium and it was like my eyes were wide like a deer in the headlights. You know, that that cliche. Mm -hmm. But it was hysterical because nothing came out. I opened oh, no. my mouth and nothing came out. Oh. And it was like. Oh my gosh, this is not really happening. And then you see all the faces out in the crowd of the women like, oh, I feel so f sorry for her. Oh. And there's nothing. It was like nothing. It was like a movie. It was pretty funny. But then, you know, it wasn't funny then at the Yo, time. Yeah, and sure. then it was kind of like, and I'm going to date myself here, the gong show. I don't know oh, if you yeah. ever saw <laughs> But they had to give me the gong to get like, me get off out of, out of the podium because, you know, I was kind of like stuck, frozen. What do I do? So at that point, you know, I think that those, sometimes those things have a marker, you mm -hmm. know, when, when you have yeah. an experience like that, For then sure. you start to build this story and that's like, mm. oh, I go back to that moment. And then I remember, you know, I was oh, there. It's confirming that you yes. are not, either you don't like it or you're not good at it. Exactly. Yeah. You keep using that as exactly. a. So I kept, um, you know, doing that and saying that to myself and, you know, that kind of followed me. I mean, my, mm -hmm. my girls, that particular daughter is now 30. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, this was a long time ago and I think, uh, it, you know, flickered on and off from, from many years and you know, I would get better cause I'd practice more or whatever. Mm -hmm. So then I had a, um, a, one of our networking groups, mm -hmm. I had a, a chance to give a, a 10 minute presentation on my, um, business. And so I decided to go and I go down memory lane and talk about how, you know, a few different aspects of my first photography work and mm -hmm. how I got started and different things. And I was planning on, you know, I wanted it to be fun. And I told a few mm -hmm. stories about, um, my brother. And, um, so I was thinking it was, I was going to be great, you know, yeah. but I got up there and it's funny because the, the moment I stepped up there, even into myself, I was saying, 
oh, you're going to, it's the deer in the headlights, oh, you know, no. yeah. it's going to be bad. They're going to be bored. You're going to get the gong show thing again. Oh, and no. so I'm up there the whole time. And even before I speak, I say, I'm not that great yeah. at public speaking. Yeah. And then I'm just mad at myself that I've actually said that out loud. Oh, and I'm up there and I'm speaking and I'm nervous and I'm worried and I'm mm -hmm. looking and I'm thinking, oh, is everybody bored? Is this ter This is terrible. Yeah. I'm doing terrible. And, um, but then I got through and I, I was thinking, well, okay, I think I did okay. Yeah. I, but I think it was kind of bad, kind of terrible. I don't know. And so I get home because my husband is so supportive and he Aww. says, uh, so how'd you do? And I said, well, I did okay. I don't know. I, I wish I could have done better, you know? <laughs> and uh, so that story kept coming on. And then I remembered that my friend had videoed portion of oh, it. Oh, yeah. So I reached out to her immediately and I said, hey, can you send me that, your video? Mm -hmm. And she sent it over and my husband and I are watching it like, you know, minutes later because that's yeah. the blessing of technology. Yeah. And he says, what are you talking about? You're killing it. Oh. And I looked and I, and I said, you know, I really am. <sighs> and then a light bulb went off and I said, I was a bald-faced liar. Uh -huh. My inner critic was lying the whole time. And it was like this huge revelation for me that we could sit and tell mm -hmm. ourselves something that is completely untrue. Mm -hmm. And we could believe it with all our fiber of our being at that very moment. Mm -hmm. But it would be a bald-faced lie. Yep. Because it was. Yeah. Because I was killing it. I yeah. was doing great. I was funny. Yeah, yes, and I was animated. And so then I thought, holy Toledo, that is something that I really need to share because yeah. how many times and how lucky am I to have a friend that videotaped me? Yes. Because usually we don't have the proof. Yes. It's our own mind, which is always yes. a dangerous place to oh, go alone. Absolutely. You do not I go gotta, alone. <laughs> no, I don't want to be alone. <laughs> no, not with your thoughts sometimes. No, sometimes. I mean, it is good. To, yeah. Uh, no. But, you know, not the negative ones, I should say. Yeah. Those are the ones that But it is a crazy there. place up there. Yeah. You know, sometimes I can... Yeah. But anyway, so that was something that was really incredibly Sparked freeing. That change. Yeah. And and I think that um it just illuminated the the ability to have proof of mm -hmm. something to make a change, to change that story about mm -hmm. something that you've been telling yourself. So definitely. Oh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. And you did a great job with the presentation you did in our group when you talked all oh, about Oh yeah. You always have words of wisdom too because you are a book fiend. I am a book fiend. So I was going to ask you maybe at the end to do some book recommendations oh, because I got you <laughs> always have them. So we'll have to do some book recommendations yeah. maybe at the end. Okay. That sounds great. That's good. I All right. It. So what do, what do you want to jump into? Cause I know you have some great thoughts to share. Um, well, I got changing your story. Yes. Because you know, that, that was the, um, the one thing that I wanted to make sure that we covered or said is that proof, mm -hmm. you know, is a, a factor that can lead to change. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, we don't always have that. And um, so one of the other stories that I wanted to share is uh, menopause. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's exciting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> But it's you all know, gonna, if, if you're it, a woman and you're listening, it's hey, going to happen. Hey, man, 43 is when I started. I'm 53. I think I'm 53. Let me think. Yes. Oh. Okay. You know, you have to always think yeah. about how old you oh, are. Oh, I forgot. I, I grew up, when I was out of college, I was doing Mary Kay full time and mm -hmm. I was like 22 and I'm trying to, you know, be a businesswoman and yeah. work with women. And so I didn't want to be, I almost was like a teacher. I didn't tell them my age ever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so in my head, I was 28. <laughs> and I had a friend who was about 10 years older than me. So we yeah. kind of met in the middle and we were 28. Like we didn't say that, but we yeah. just mentally like, but that's where I am. And so for years I was like, I'm 28, I'm 28. And then I turned 30. And then like, you kept saying you were 28. Well, I was, I realized I kind of missed my 20s. I mean, not in any emotional way or anything, right. but just like, oh, dang, I'm 30 now. <laughs> like, I just, I forgot about my age for so long. I was long. 28 for so yeah, long. Huh, that 20. And then I was like, crap, I really was 28 and I kind of forgot about it. So yeah, now, you know. Yeah, I just feel like no one thinks – it's hard to think about your yeah. age. You have, oh, I know. Let alone your kids' ages and birthdays. I think – I don't know when it happens that you end up like what age it is that you start with the halves again. Because, you know, oh, like you, yeah. when you're eight, you're eight and a half. half. Or, and then I think there's like when – when is it? When you hit 80? Is it 80 and a half? I don't know. I don't know what that magic number is on the back end, oh. but I'm sure I'll hit there. And yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm 90 and a half. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know when it's going to be, but yeah, I feel like... I'm sure we'll go back to that half because I have um, been with some elderly folks that have thrown that half. Really? There. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yeah. 
I, well, I get, you know what? I bet at you get to a certain age, just like so when you're young, you can't wait to get to the next age. I guess so. Then we have this middle period of time where we don't we don't even remember want, our age. We don't remember right? exactly, and then we we of course want to get to the next age, but we don't want to think about that age. Yeah. But then I bet we get there's a, you know, third stage where you're like happy, proud to be at that age, and you yeah. can't wait. You know, it's like heck yeah, I'm almost ninety one. Yeah. So they're like, I'm. Throwing in that half yeah. or that three quarter. Yeah, year. I want to get the credit for all the life I've lived. So, well, the the thing with menopause, I mean, I don't know how many people listening or or whatever, but it's like for me, it's been ten years of hot flashes, weight gain, and you know what, whatever other goodies that come along with it. But for for years now, almost probably nine years, uh, I kept telling myself that uh, the story was that. I wasn't sleeping, so, and the menopause made me gain this weight, and, Mm -hmm. you know, I just told myself all of these reasons why I couldn't get back to a place that I felt healthy, Mm -hmm. Um, so I had a, I went to a workshop and just kind of got a little bit of clarity on my own power, Mm -hmm. and kind of had a burning desire, I would say, to make a change, Mm. and what I found interesting is that this time, and here's the thing, you know, we say that we're going to do a change or make a change. And then what usually happens? I know for me, fear and doubt set in or complacency. Or you do it for like a week, Mm -hmm. real hard, solid, and then everything else gets in the way. Yeah. So I thought this time has really got to be different because I really want to, to have this really happen. And change the story that I've been yes. telling myself. Oh, so, so tell us what is the uh, secret, it, Don? I got, oh my three, gosh. I got some secrets for you. Oh my gosh. So yes. All right, give us these secrets. The first one was a burning desire to, to have that weight gone. Okay. That was it. And it, and it, you know, it had desires before, but it wasn't quite like this. I was really on fire to change and get healthy and to be back. So, but you know, I've been been there before, but not quite as on fire yeah. as this time. So See. the other thing was I set a date. Oh, I said yeah, an exact just like all goals set a date. Yeah, an exact date. So August tenth. Wow. Um, and I don't know where I pulled that out of the sky or what, but it just pulled that date out. Wow. And then I decided I needed to have action, but that's where you fall short is the action, right? Yeah. When you're always trying to make your goals or do something or change your story. Yeah. So the other aspect of that was the three R's of okay. action. Okay. Which are record, review, and report. Ooh. So record for me, and this is not a plug for Apple Watch. <laughs> but if uh, Apple wants well, to sponsor, yeah, throw there you us go. some free watches. Yeah, there you go. I need an upgrade. <laughs> yeah, so do but I. But th- that was my daughter had given me her hand-me-down Apple Watch. Uh-huh. So I kind of went into it. And what I loved about it was the accountability or mm-hmm. the uh, recording of my activity. Yeah. Which was something that, um, you know, I was pretty active before, mm-hmm. um, but – this time I had a recording mm-hmm. of what I was doing. Um, what were you tracking on your watch? Tracking on uh, the, the Apple watch actually records your, um, your stand, Step. your move. Yeah. And which is kind of like a calories that you've mm-hmm. burned and then an exercise yes. ring. So, and I know this is going to sound really cheeky or cliche or whatever, but I really get off on when my rings go yeah. off all three of them yes. and I get so super excited yes. like, and do you share with anyone I do because we share with friends now and it's like annoying because if you're <laughs> wanting to be lazy and then you see your friends are working out you're like oh I mean of course I mean annoying in a good way because yeah. it motivates you it's yeah. like you can't just be in your own world like no one else is working now you yeah know, exactly struggling. so like, reviewing you know going to that next hour reviewing is just like you said looking at yeah. it actually saying okay I need to I'm gonna eat that scone which is you know this I need to get a little bit more I never really, I mean, I was a healthy eater before, yeah. but it was just an accountability to be able to say, okay, you know what? You've eaten this much calorie, this mm-hmm. much calories in a day, you know, maybe you need to do this. So, mm-hmm. um, and then the other part was reporting back to my daughter where we shared, like mm. you said, we shared, um, and our, our accountability where our exercise was concerned. And then we also found an app for, you know, just kind of keeping track mm-hmm. of what we ate. But mm-hmm. what was mo- most important 
is that those three R's, the record, review, and report, mm -hmm. were allowed me to change the story. Mm -hmm. It gave me, I had the desire, but I didn't, I, and I, I knew what I needed to do because let's face it, that's usually what we, we have a desire and we know what to do. Mm -hmm. It's just the doing part yeah. to get to that change. So by reporting back and believe me, a little reporting means, Hey, I see that you haven't been doing anything yeah. today. Get out and walk. I'd call her. She'd call me. Aww. And so it was yeah. really great. And so that changed the story that I wasn't, that it was just a story that that weight was mm -hmm. hanging there for no mm -hmm. reason and, or that I couldn't do anything about mm -hmm. it. So I thought that was pretty powerful. I thought that was a pretty powerful lesson for yeah. me. Um, so that I had very similar because I we got the Apple Watch my husband and I and we were like I had it for like I don't know two years at least not using the the activity exercise stuff at all and then I kind of had the similar aha moments of like I need to get back into more physical being more active because by nature I am not physically active I'm actually <laughs> one of my hidden talents and I don't think it's very hidden is that I'm really good at nothing and I don't mean like boohoo nothing I'm not good at anything I mean I'm literally good <clears> at <throat> sitting and doing nothing so if you ever need someone to go on a road trip with you or go oh, to the hospital like girl mm, I will sit all day with you and now with smartphones I'm like I could sit for days um <laughs> so I have to break that and um but see here I am I'm telling that story that I'm very and you know so I started, I did the whole, um, I was reading in a book, you know, and it reminded me of the 10,000 steps a day yep, goal. Yep, 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 And so I started with that. And I remember we actually went to the book, that not bookstore, the um, shoe store. And I told the person, I'm like, well, I recently became an endurance athlete. And, you know, of course she looked at me because I don't necessarily have the physique of an endurance athlete, but I she, she went with me on it. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. And I, and then I broke the news to her that I was like, I'm, I'm uh, doing 10,000 steps a day. <laughs> oh, I love this. <laughs> and I was at the running store, you yeah. know, and it's like, I'm basically your most basic person, um, but they got me the good shoes and it was actually life changing because my yes. feet were always killing me yeah. when I got the right shoes. And, but walking and I've gotten out of the habit. So this is a good reminder that I need to do it again. But in the beginning, you know, of course me, I joke about it and I'm an endurance athlete. You know, I'm, I sound sarcastic and I am being a little sarcastic or whatnot for the sake I love of, your sarcasm, by yes, the way. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. But here's, you know, me, I'm going to be honest with you because as I said before, podcasts are a place for honesty. All right. That sarcasm is masking the, not always, but like with the, the, you know, my, um, my endurance athlete status. Yes. To me, like doing 10,000 <laughs> steps is endurance athlete for me. You know, I say it's, I know it's a joke. I know that to most people that is not, but for me, achieving that was a big deal. And it took a lot of focused and, energy. And can I just say that you should celebrate that? Well, and that's what I'm like, yes, yeah. I need to celebrate that. Yeah, you know? for sure. And so, you know, I, I think the other story I told myself too, in kind of in, in this vein was that I'd have to do major things to, um, get healthy. Mm -hmm. And really the simplicity of it was the beauty of it because yeah. I said, okay, only 30 minutes of exercise a day. It's not when, I mean, it's not if I'm going to do it, it's just when, when I'm going to do That's it. That's a big change that if, yeah, yeah. got to change that if to yeah, when. Yeah, to when. Mm -hmm. And then I just said, you know, it's it's 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the night. And, you know, when I, I could walk mm -hmm. the dogs and do it. Yeah. Just just making it happen. So but now was... I get annoyed. Does your watch ever not give you credit for exercise when you're walking? Because oh. I will walk outside and I'll walk for 30 minutes and I have like five minutes <laughs> of exercise. And then I have a dilemma of do I keep walking and do I just let it go? Because I know my own, you know, I know that my, for myself that I've been walking for over 30 minutes, but it doesn't say it on the watch. So I'm like, well, I, know. I have to keep walking. Sometimes it it's not as, and especially like I have the really first edition or something close to that, but oh, I so it doesn't first. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't work as well. So I think we both need to upgrade. Oh, okay. But come on Apple what, <laughs> support this podcast. <laughs> support us Apple. Uh, but <clears throat> one thing is funny because um, so I'm kind of driven by numbers. Mm -hmm. I just, and I might be a little bit competitive. I might be Ooh, okay. with my daughter and I, this, the middle yeah. daughter and I are pretty competitive people. And so I'm like, I have to close my rings first. Yeah. Oh, she'll, I, and I hope she'll, she'll hear this podcast and be like, 
I knew it. I knew it. And Mom. so I'm watching and seeing who's who's like um, you know, cuz her husband is actually sharing with us. Uh-huh. So we're like, okay. And so, you know, I'm like at the 580 cuz my calorie um yeah. move ring is like 600 is what I've said oh, it to. Oh, nice. Oh, I better up my So I'm, I'm like at five, 580 <gasps> and my husband jumping jacks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> living no, room. I'm I'm going up and down. We have like a split level, so we have like four stairs. I'm going up and down, up, up and down, down, up and down. <laughs> And then at first, my husband said, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. And now he says, oh, you're trying to close mm-hmm. those rings, are you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's funny you said the competitive because with our friends that we share with, I, I've i realized, you know, sometimes I thought, okay, I am competitive. I'm not competitive because, yeah. you know, with certain things I am, like sports, like why, you know, I was kind of in that mindset of why even try? I know I'm not going to. Um, but then, you know, we play a board game or something and oh, suddenly yeah. I like want to win. But with the watch, it's kind of one of those things like as long as I meet my goal, I'm happy. But when all of us friends were talking about the watches, I found out that some of them were racing to finish the rings. And I was like, <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing. Like I didn't even realize. So then I was like, hmm, do I need to start getting, you know, this? But I've kind of fallen off the wagon with it. So I need to get back on it. So, yeah. Well, I think for me, the, the having the date, um, the, the finish yes. date is really critical because you can always say, I'm going to put it off. Well, and let me just say, I forgot to include a little or not little, but major fact in this whole thing is that we both, my daughter and I both love another sponsorship. Here it comes. (laughs) Free bird boots. Um, They're very like amazing boots. And we both don't even know about these free bird boots. Well, they're pretty cool. They're now they'll be in our, both of our Facebook feeds. Oh, great. Because we're talking about it. I know. But, um, Anyway, so the person who didn't make their goal <gasps> by August 10th had to buy the other person a pair of Freebird boots. Oh, that's hardcore. Oh, so, so that would get oh, me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they're, of... they're not cheap boots, oh, but they're gorgeous. But so we both are like, oh, I'm not, you're not, I'm not buying oh. you the boots. So we're, we're both very driven by that. So oh. that was another little thing we threw in. But oh, I'm going to have to now think about yeah. some kind of cool. It's funny you said the thing about dates because setting a date, I think setting the end date yes. is important to have like the end of your goal. And then, of course, it's the classic if you don't meet it, that's okay. You readjust, you know, but you yeah. have to have it. But I think the start date is important because so we don't keep pushing that off either. I absolutely. And it's not a coincidence that today, I don't think it's a coincidence that today is July 11th Mm -hmm. because I remember seven years ago, this was the day I decided I was going to start after my son was born. Like I'm going to take control of my health. I'm sick of feeling, you know, sick and tired type of thing. And I remember I was like, all right, this is the day. Cause you know, I kept putting it off. And the reason I remember it, there's no way I would remember because I didn't write it down. But the way I do is that, I, I got started with my day. I went on a play date because, you know, I had a toddler and a baby mm-hmm. and I had cut up peppers and cut up cucumbers and that way I had a healthy snack. And then I get to the play date and everyone's telling me that it's free Slurpee day at 7-Eleven. Oh. And I was like, <laughs> oh, free Slurpee day. Yeah, 7-Eleven. Yes. Oh, and yeah. so I remember thinking like having this whole internal dialogue, like, am I going to revert because it's free and if you know anything about me like if it's free it's for me and you know (laughs) that's always my downfall is free things and so I had this real internal conflict of am I just going to push it off another day and I'm dying to know I well I think I know the answer but I'm gonna wait well it's a little bit Mm -hmm. of a cop-out but um so so back then so this was before I started reading all of the stuff about um you know, just the process. I mean, I knew processed food is yeah. bad, but I was I was more just thinking cutting out sugar yeah. and um, that kind of stuff. Like, so I get to Seven Eleven, and there was a sugar free option for the oh. Slurpee. So I got this. <laughs> so I got a kid size sugar free, and I felt, but it felt like a win because I yeah. felt like I was able to partake in mm-hmm. the fun of it. Which, yes, I know from like a food standpoint, like it's so horrible and food dye and blah blah blah. But just that was like my little win of I was staying true to myself, which yep. was not getting like the sugar laden Slurpee. And so it, it felt like oh, and then it also was that what you said earlier about. It doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have no. to be, now I don't get to partake in this and da, da, da. It was like, I just, it was a small change. And and then now it's like, if I didn't have it, I would be just as happy, you know, not having it. Um, Absolutely. So, but yeah, that's how I remember my date. And so when, <laughs> now it's coming around, I'm like, oh, okay, this is maybe a good reminder to make my health a priority and things like that. So uh, that's, that's a wonderful marker. Yeah. I didn't National plan Slurpee it. Day. <laughs> National Slurpee Day. I didn't plan that, but I love it. 
So as a photographer of women, yes. what do you – so you talk about this a lot. And so you talk about women seeing their picture after you take their photograph. Oh, yeah. I mean, what do you think – what do you think is – what makes them see themselves in that light? I mean, I know it's your artistry. I want to give credit to your artistry and all of that. Um, but what do you think part of that is, though? Uh, I think that's a great question. And I, I appreciate that you want to give me credit for, for that. But yeah. I'm really just blessed to capture it. Mm -hmm. Because it's an interesting thing. Um, when, And I'm not saying that hair and makeup is, mm -hmm. is it, mm -hmm. but it's a chance for when women take a moment to embrace themselves mm -hmm. and to have time for themselves and to value themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when they come to the studio and they get a chance to just breathe and mm -hmm. let go and then somebody's pampering them or oh, you yeah. know they're getting they're getting mm -hmm. their hair done or they're taking a moment and sometimes people don't have their hair and makeup done I'm not yeah. that's not it but it's just a moment and then they go into the studio and there's not a mirror in my shooting space oh and there never will be one that's huge it's huge because the moment someone gets a glimpse of themselves in the mirror is when, like I said at the very beginning, they start with the story. Yes. They start to say, oh, you know, my nose is too small or whatever oh, the story yeah. is that you've been telling yourself those all those years. Yes. So there is no room, there is no mirror in the shooting space. Yeah. And so what happens is that we, the beauty starts to radiate from within, within. because they've really taken the time to just kind of be mm -hmm. and we're having fun. We're making jokes mm -hmm. where I'm telling them, you know, sometimes it can be very intimate and mm -hmm. sometimes it's a portrait session or whatever. Yeah. And we are just having the best time. And I had one lady, she told me at the very beginning, this is one of my favorite stories. She said, you know, I don't look good when I smile. Oh. I said, Oh, challenge accepted. accepted yes and so i made all kinds of terrible jokes and <laughs> i finally got her and it was the most radiating beautiful smile Aww. and that was she just was blown away when she came in to see her her photographs because she says i never look good in a smile i don't mm -hmm. look good her story was that she doesn't look good when she smiles which mm -hmm. was the incorrect story because mm -hmm. what she th was telling herself that over and over again so whenever she took exactly. a picture that yep. was a oh, I see it that. was yeah. actually happening because yep. that was her story that she was telling herself yep. so to change it the proof yes was that that is the i got proof. the proof so. my friend was telling me yesterday so i wish i could give credit to where she heard it but we taught, we were just kind of going on a tangent about we spend so much energy thinking negative things. What if we put that energy into thinking positive things? Oh, my God. The world would be yeah. crazy with so much goodness yeah. and light and, oh, it just would be amazing. I think that's why with stories, you know, kind of thinking what is a story you can pull from your past and turn it into a motivating positive, encouraging one that makes you feel good about yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's a challenge I would give like to people listening. Absolutely. Um, I did that with one. I told this at um, the Story Slam at our the bookstore over in Warrington mm -hmm. a few months ago. And it was about when I was a kid and I kind of was thinking like, okay, there's something about me. And this is kind of my thought process is, okay, there's something about me. I ask a lot of questions and that can be annoying probably for people. Um, I know I'm, you know, I'm just some you know, people. Yeah. Some, some people, people, but you know, say. you're kind of asking a lot and whatnot. And so, but exactly. I was kind of going down a negative thing. Mm -hmm. Like this is something not great about me. And then of course, because I'm surrounded by amazing people all the time that are encouraging and married to one and, you know, surrounded by them in, in personal and business. And so I kind of, it's like retrained my brain that like, okay, this isn't a bad thing. It's a good thing to be someone who asks questions. So I started digging deep and thinking, well, why am I like this? Like, what is it about me? Mm -hmm. Why do I ask questions? So I thought back and this popped into my head and I've turned this into almost like a funny story that's made, like one, one of the many stories that makes us who we are. This is one of them for me. And who knows if it, I mean, I think it did, but um, when I was a kid, I was, sick at my grandparents' house. I was out in South Dakota and my parents were traveling. They were um, moving in the army. And so I was with my grandparents and I got really sick. I mean, like violently ill, throwing up. And 
they had to take me to the doctor. And I was the type of kid, I feel like I can see that in my daughter now, like very, you know, like, oh yeah, that's what I was going to say. And like, yeah, I'm like an mm-hmm. adult, you know, whenever you tell like, yeah, yeah, I know that, you know? And so <laughs> they take me to the doctor and I'm wanting to be, I'm probably eight at the time. And the doctors explained, you know, what we need to do. We're just in this little one blinking light type of town and I'm throwing up, nothing's staying down. I'm sure I'm dehydrated. And he says, all right, um, you're going to need to take a suppository. Are you okay with that? An eight-year-old me is like, yeah, no problem. I don't mind. Like, <laughs> sure. He shows it to me and I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I'm taking bigger pills than that. Yeah. Like, I don't care. And so me not wanting to ask because uh, I'm kind of smart. You know, I'm an, I'm an, I'm an old eight-year-old. I, yeah. I know things. And so we get back home and I'm like, <laughs> all right, I'm ready to pop that pill and not be sick anymore. And my grandma's like, you need to lay down. Oh, no. And I'm like, why? You know, she's like, well, because the suppository goes, you know. I'm like, what? (laughs) Blew my mind. Very traumatic. And it was like, at that moment, I'm like, oh, never again. I am asking questions. Um, You know, we talk a lot with women. It's like, oh, I don't like to be confrontational or whatever. Like, you guys, if you do not ask questions and clarify things. You You might have to get a suppository. (laughs) Yes, something might end up up your butt. So, like, come on. So, I'm like, that was like, oh, my gosh, that was life changing for me. So, anytime I was confused or after that, I feel like. I we let me get the facts. Story. Yes, like I'm going back to that, and like you know, you know what happened when you didn't ask questions. So this is what happened. Something's up your butt. So probably sometimes I need to chill out a little bit and be like, Sam, if you don't ask a question, uh, nothing's gonna end up up your butt. That's but, a great you know, story. It did when I was young, and so I say that changed me. It made me. It made me who I am. I will ask all the questions in the world. So. Well, that's a wonderful thing because <laughs> being curious is is great, and yeah. it also is a great protective mechanism. Yeah, it can be. That's for sure. So I'm going to have some closing questions okay. for you. Um, I meant to ask these to Rebecca, so I'm going to have to go back and and uh, to ask her so we can have our every guest ask these. Oh, wonderful. So it could be either one question or three questions. So it is, so because I'm all about conversations mm-hmm. and connecting and chatting, what is a conversation you need to either start having, stop having, or continue having. So is there something that you are talking about that you want to not talk about anymore? And it could be about you, the world, whatever, or that you want to start. And that kind of ties into your topic today about changing the story. Yeah. But I would say, does it is it relevant to me or is it just... I would say anything. It's up to you. Okay. And it could be serious, silly, whatever. Okay. Well, I would say that I would like to start a conversation about clean water. Really? Yeah. And you know what? I Why? I mean, that, that might seem random, but I just finished a book called um, Charity Water. And yes. it's Scott Harrison um, started this, this charity water. Yes. And I just have a thing for... Um, I don't want to say clean water because I think we all have it. Might have a thing for clean water, <laughs> clean drinking that, water. Yeah, but a passion I don't know. I've for just, everyone I would like water. to keep conversations and start conversations about that and glass recycling. Another random little. Yes, <laughs> yes. And now it was at the purple bin. You can recycle glass at the county again because oh, I hope so. Stopped recycling yeah. glass. Yeah, that's so right. I think there might be a bin. So okay. Thank you for answering that. Random, I know. So, no, but you just proved a point without even realizing it. So this is why I love my life, because I love connecting people. Mm -hmm. So the amazing Marianne Clyde, who runs the Be the Change Foundation, which is the 12-week course I took um, for women, you know, in in business and, as I said, just wanting to kind of pursue a passion – she is currently raising money for clean water, and she's hiking – one of the mountains that I can't think of off the top of my head. And that's her whole passion. And she's just located right out here in Warrenton area. Oh, wow. And she would be an amazing person for you to connect with. I would love to. Or at to. least to see her journey and see what she's doing. And maybe that might be something you can piggyback on. I but would. her clean water, right when you said clean water, I was like, oh my gosh, Marianne. And I only met her a few months ago. And like, wow. that's her whole that's, thing is I would clean love that. water. How I would cool love is that? that? See, you never know. Like, what is the random thing that's on your mind? This is why you're doing this. This is pretty powerful. Oh. So thank you. Well, thank you for sharing today. It was amazing. It always is amazing to chat with you, but thanks for sharing. Oh, thank you. I loved hearing more about, you know, your journey. Um, Actually, we didn't even talk about your journey journey. We just kind of talked about some of those thoughts in your head, but we might have to save that for another day. Sure. 
you have a background in graphic design. I do. I do. And thanks to Darren Stevens. <laughs> I know. And did you know that, you know, his wife is Samantha. Oh, Samantha. oh my gosh. That's ironic. And you know what I also loved about that story is that when you watched it, you totally connected with him and the ad agencies and everything. And all I saw was like, I want to be her. We have the same name and I want to wiggle my nose and make my house clean. <laughs> <laughs> so that just shows how we can all see the same thing and, and get pull a different something different out of it. Absolutely. Well, Don, um, if, because I want to give you that shout out that you so deserve, if women or families or anyone mm-hmm. is interested in photography with you, how can they reach you? Well, my website, which is dongardner.com. I also have a, a Facebook page, a DG, or actually it's Don Gardner Photography. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the Facebook page. And I'm also on Instagram. So, Insta. yeah. Awesome. So be sure and search for her. And um, thank you for continuing to share your passions about everything from, you know, empowering women to clean water. Thank you for doing that. And and I said earlier, I wanted to ask book recommendations. What are some off the top of your head? So to give you guys some backstory, Dawn gives away books at every speaking engagement she does, every, you know, women's empowerment night she hosts. And I have been the lucky winner of at least one, maybe two books. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think you have so, been. Yeah. Well, I think one of the, the top books that I always love to give away at mm-hmm. my events is You Are a Badass yes. by Jen Chinchero. Um, I think that is just a phenomenal read. If you haven't read it, you need to check it out like mm-hmm. right away. Go right now and get it. <laughs> get it. Um, and then I say the other one for marketing, one of my favorites is uh, Zombie Loyalist. Yes. That's creating, what I won. Mm-hmm. Creating Rabid Fans. That's an amazing book. And let me see. There's one more, which is kind of more on the serious um, – Self growth mm-hmm. kind of uh, mm-hmm. plane, which is uh, Trevor Blake's Three Simple Steps, mm. life changing book. Up awesome. up in my top five, that book is awesome. Three Simple Steps. I love it, and I'll yeah. throw my recommendation in Bossy Pants by Tina Fey. I listened oh to the audio God. version, and I laughed so hard. And that's that was also probably part of the journey of me wanting to do this podcast because just listening to her made me. I'm laugh gonna a check lot. that out. <laughs> it's just like a. I mean, but she gives some good life lessons. But anyway, she just told some stories that made me cry. So like from laughter. Yes. It was a great one. So wonderful. Well, thank you, Dawn. Thank you for having me. Yes. Come again. Oh, I will. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I met Mike on uh, Match.com. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Mm. Lots of freaks on there. You know, but there's also lots of success stories. I know. We're one of them. But, man, I was on there for a week. And when I met him and I was – I made some hard, fast rules after that week. And I was getting ready to get off of the match. <sighs> yeah. But one of them was I uh, wasn't going to even consider any a guy that had a profile picture with a shirt off. Yes! I, I didn't know you were going to say that. <laughs> and in my head, I was like, a shirtless pick? It's a – no, it's, nope, a, it's, it's not a happening. No. It's, it's a It's happening. No. <laughs> But and then when I set up my own profile, I didn't really realize what I was doing. So, but everybody co- kept Shirtless commenting. Pick. No, no, no. <laughs> everybody kept commenting. Oh, your pictures are so different from all the other girls, all the other ladies. What? I'm like, what the heck? You know, what did I do differently? And you know, my best friend's husband said, you have to put a full length. Guys want full length pictures. You have to put a full length. I'm like, oh. okay, fine. I'll put a full length. So the full length I chose, which I thought was a great one, was me in front of that big roller skate on 17. Oh, you goes. Yeah. I'm doing like a little flourish oh. with my hands, you know, in front of the big skate. So I thought that was a great full body pick. But yeah. then, but you know, I am a photographer. So, and I do a lot yeah. of, I just don't photograph people. I do other things, yeah. you know, on vacation. Yeah, you have a good eye. So, my pictures were of Glacier Park, groundhogs, oh. prairie what? dogs, bison, <laughs> and you know I did have a couple pictures of myself. You know, winning winning the Chili Queen. What? To, oh my uh, gosh, I, I had a crown. That. You know, Chili Queen crown. I thought, you know, I want people to know that I'm humorous too. That's and so funny. So I kept hearing that. You know, people were saying, "Well, your pictures." And so I went and looked at other women's pictures. And you were like, oh, it's just There was them. a lot of cleavage. Yeah. There was a lot of uh, bathing suit pictures. And, you know, I had prairie dogs and on mine. And groundhogs. <laughs> groundhogs. And mountains. Classic. And so, anyway, it was just funny. But 
I think, but you found your man because he did. saw you and he was like, because oh, he man, appreciated my love for photography. So oh. he's he had that as well. So that was kind of cool. And that's a wrap for now. Thanks for listening to Flushing It Out with Samantha Spittle. Music provided by TwinMusicom.org. Song titled Night at the Dance Hall. Sound editing by me, Jeremy Spittle. A special thanks to our studio sponsor, MM Exteriors. Visit their website at mmexteriors.com for all of your roofing, siding, and gutter needs in the Northern Virginia area. Visit our website at flushingitout.com and be sure to subscribe. This has been a Spitfire production. That was the greatest thing I've ever heard.